All right, bro skis. We are back with our favorite lifting slave, bro. Jason Blaha Strength and Fitness, the gym slave on YouTube with over 11,000 videos, saturating YouTube with his lifting slave videos and his lifting fake bro science fake info. The key to muscle growth is putting as much tension on every muscle fiber. Yes, it's so complicated. Yes, yes. Let's review this video. Hey everybody, it's Jason Law here. And today I thought I would chat with you guys a little bit about understanding what we mean by mechanical tension and progressive overload. And again, so let me get this straight. The key to muscle growth is putting as much tension on every muscle fiber. So if you put ten, so tension builds a muscle. That's basically what this lifting slave is, is telling you. That tension is going to build a muscle, and we know that muscles reached a myonuclear domain size limit. Progenitors not donating any more extra nuclei to support further muscle of that domain. That that muscle. So uh, what what muscle are you growing here exactly? He's not telling you. He's an endurance athlete because he's coming in. He's telling you to come in training, chronically training. You're an endurance athlete. Anything that you do often is endurance training. If you do something that you're chronically adapted to, you are an endurance trainer. Why is that? Because you're physically coming in often. And so you're using up energy, you're, you're dispelling energy and increasing energy. So you're absorbing energy and releasing energy. And since you're eating a herbivore diet, a carbohydrate diet, which is not natural for humans, instead of making your own ketones, your own gl glucose in your body through a carnivore, natural carnivore animal diet, you're eating a herbivore diet, which you're not supposed to be eating grass. You're supposed to be eating the cow. The cow eats the grass, but you want to eat the grass. And so you build these sarcoplasmic muscles because it draws it in glucose into the muscle. So it's an external source coming in internally instead of using your internal source of your ketones. And so you're going to build these, these muscles called sarcoplasmic hypertrophy. It's a known fact, takes on a life of its own and trained people get sarcoplasmic. Why? Why, do a, why does a trained person get sarcoplasmic hypertrophy muscles? Because it's endurance. You understand me? Because it's chronic. So it's endurance. You are lifting a weight, but you are moving, using your body. So when you're using your body chronically, that is endurance. That's why it wears you out and you age rapidly because you're an endurance athlete. To literally build muscle, real muscle, it has to be very specific. And again, it only happens when you're untrained, you come into the gym. And there's no more after that, like I've produced in my other videos. So I'm not going to keep bringing it up in this video, okay? I'm just going to describe what it is, but whatever. So it's artificial muscle growth. Because it's fluid, it's just building up fluid in the muscle. But anyhow, the weight part, that you lifting the weight, getting good at it, your body will give you adaptations, but those adaptations will be in myositic androgen receptors. That's about it, binding there and giving you force production. The molecule, and that's about it, because it's not responsible for the mass, bro, of the myofibular. There we go. It's Myonuclear domain size limit is the is responsible for that mass. And without it... There ain't no math, no math, no math. Yeah, man. Coming more and more understood in the research that the primary driver of muscle growth is tension, mechanical tension. But what the primary driver of real, real muscle growth, not the fake one of other fake, because it doesn't really say, but I'll tell you the real one is myonuclei. If you don't have them, they synthesize protein. If you don't have them, then you're not, you're not, you're not driving that. You're not driving. There's no driver of this muscle growth. None of these things are going to drive it. Only those nuclei are not, not lifting that bar or eating protein or eating your candy bars. Whatever the fuck you're doing there, McDonald's, it ain't going to drive it. Sorry. What do we mean by that? You know, because when you bring that topic up, people will say, well, does that always mean weight on the bar? Well, yes, if your form, your cadence, your range of motion, the way you perform the exercise stays exactly the same, and you add weight, then mechanical tension will go up, okay? Yeah, of course, you add weight, mechanical tension goes up, you get force production, you get more of these androgen receptors, and they give you more force production, so it goes up, yes. You're compensating, you're putting your body in a position to give you an adaptation in, in androgen receptors, but muscles are post-metodic. They don't split, divide, and increase in number, bro, just by lifting a weight. But 
that's only if or an endurance there's definitely not this endurance lifting for sure nothing changes and that's one of the problems we run into with uh, the idea of progressive overload you know you explain to people that look well according to him hyperplasia doesn't exist so yeah if it doesn't exist then you can't further any muscle growth because once that fiber gets that so big that nuclear domain it sizes up it can no longer get any bigger that that fiber cannot get bigger and bigger and bigger forever fat cells now you don't get more or less of them but they can get really big they can get really big and really small full triglyceride but muscle fiber cells no they have a domain limit that's the problem they can only blow up so big and then they can't get any bigger isn't doesn't that suck bro maybe like five eight pounds of muscle you might gain if you're lucky maybe 10 yeah at the, at the best if you're lucky that's about it you gain maybe between five to ten pounds of newbie gains and that's it after that there's nothing progressive overload uh, is a critical part of gaining muscle why because it can increase the tension on the muscle and the more tension that is placed on a muscle uh, you know the more growth stimulus it gets the more fatigue the more growth stimulus it gets a growth stimulus but is not growing because that even if that was the tension were to cause any type of damage to your muscle fiber we all know that uh repeated bout effect phenomena protects muscle from a repeated bout of muscle damage with a repeated bout it's protected so with a repeated bout there's no more damage it hides into type one that's why you're you're an endurance athlete when you come into the gym it moves into type one because it's all dependent on your training and you're not training for myofibular growth what you're training for is sarcoplasmic. You're an endurance athlete now because you're chronically lifting. You're so busy focused on lifting a heavy weight that you forgot about building the body. You see, you conquered the weights, but you never conquered the body. You understand me? Because you can't. You can't conquer it because you don't know how. Because it reached a myonuclear domain size limit, a ceiling limit. Yeah. We create the more, uh, the deeper muscle fibers that we recruit. Okay? And I think most people get that concept. The problem becomes... The heavier you lift, you can recruit, recruit deeper muscle fibers. Okay, so you're recruiting. Are you damaging or recruiting? Which one are you doing? You want to recruit them for what? So you can get more androgen, androgen receptors? For more force production? See what I mean? Listen to the wording. So what happens when form changes? Well, that's, that's an important point. So one of the things you guys will notice there in the benching and stuff I'm doing, because when I'm benching... What happens when that form change? What, what happens? What happens? For hypertrophy, you notice I'm using a little less weight than when you see my power benching, right? But I'm also doing a longer range of motion. We're, we're more, more flat back, no real arch. Therefore, we get a deeper stretch at the bottom. But what does that mean for tension? Well, that means with the same weight, the tension on the muscle can increase a lot. It can, can it? Because... It can, can it? No, really? He's always lifting the same weight, 45 pound plates. As when we go into deeper stretched movements, the, the muscles are put in a disadvantage. Okay, they're losing the mechanical advantage that we might get from an arch. So it's not just range of motion, and that's what people don't understand when we start... Mechanical tension just means like cable work, like, okay, or li this lifting, you're, you're connected now with the bar and you're moving it up and down. It's not going anywhere. That could be a mechanical tension where you're benching, you're squatting, not deadlifting necessarily, because unless you're holding on to the bar, moving it up and down and cables, because the cable, there's a tension. It's going back and forth. The tension is constant. It's pulling you and you're pulling back. It's pulling on you. You're pulling back. So the tension is there constantly. It's more like that type of tension. This tension is going down and it's going up. So there's a lot of tension there. That's all that, that, that means. What does that mean? Nothing. Okay, tension. And so what? How's that build a muscle? Changing form on exercises and the, the way that joints move uh, changes. I told you already, you need to focus on eating bowls of potato to get these fake muscles. If you want, if you want to further further growth after this domain ends the myonuclear domain size if you want to further growth the easy way like all of you you want to do any easy because you're all these endurance athletes then just focus on eating shit loads of potatoes bags of them 50 pound bags of potatoes and you too will look like an open bodybuilder as a natural athlete get it you'll be carrying around all this phony weird sarcoplasmic muscle
it's great for cosmetic looks and everything and maybe scaring people down the street but it ain't gonna add to the strength like that real muscular strength i'm sorry it's not you may even get some gravitational loading because if you put on 20 20 even 40 pounds of sarcoplasmic hypertrophy that definitely is going to weigh down on your skeletal so that will cause a gravitational loading on the skeletal and the muscle so yeah so it would have to definitely compensate for that weight you carry so you may expand a bit definitely which would make you feel a bit stronger yeah for sure yeah it's like wearing a weighted vest oh <laughs> only it's 24 hours on your body yeah we're not just changing range of motion. We're changing joint angles. It's kind of a big deal. So it yeah, is I can kind of understand these strong men. They're weighing like 450 pounds or something in weight. They're super tall and they're super heavy, like 450 pounds. So they're carrying 450 pounds of weight on their body. So I don't know. I can't tell you how much excessive weight they're carrying or fluid or what, but that that just carrying an additional 100 to 200 pounds on their body is weighing on their skeletal so that will cause a gravitational loading and that muscle the muscle cells will it, they've got the the progenitor must donate something there to cause more growth for sure and even the bone because it needs to carry this excessive weight so definitely it will it will expand and get bigger and stronger yes for sure that's why these strong men they're they're like usually big guys they're big and whatever blah they get really super big and strong because there's a gravitational loading because of the weight they're carrying as well so that's an additional thing but uh, blaha he's small he's he weighs uh, 200 pounds or something i don't know whatever he's talking about i don't know 180 pounds or something maybe he's 170 so um yeah there's not much gravitational loading going on there see what i mean i notice a big difference when my weight goes up to like you know 60 260 70 80 there's a lot of gravitational loading when you get up to about uh, 280 85 you can feel it it's heavy loading there so there's the whole maintenance thing with the muscle and the bone and all that there's not much maintenance there the heavier you are there's less maintenance involved, but you will get hungry, but there's less maintenance because now you've got a gravitational loading on the skeletal and that will expand the myofibular and the bone. So definitely, yes. But that's another modality, another way to get you bigger. That's why people walk with pots of water. They have a bar with water or whatever the hell they're carrying there on each end and then they just walk for miles, you know, try to get a gravitational loading kind of a big deal because it's if, kind of like the bulk diet you bulk so you gain a lot of weight you get a little bit of gravitational loading when you put on this fake you know fake weight but the moment you start cutting down and getting rid of that fat well that gravitational loading goes back to homostasis so the any muscle that you got through gravitational loading it goes away so it's phony man get it the joint angles change Think about it. Why do people run around with ankle weights? They want to run with ankle weights or do things with these ankle weights, wrist weights, and whatever the hell they're doing there. Because it's, it's a type of gravitational loading. And then they take them off and they say they feel, they feel lighter or stronger or lighter. See what I mean? Because they got used to wearing that weight and then they just took it off right away. So they're hoping there's a gravitational loading. But it's very temporary. It's temporary. See what I mean? It's temporary. Temporary as long as you keep the weight on. Once the weight goes off, it goes away very quickly. Look at when, uh, what's the strong man there? What's his name? Jeff and all them. When they lost their, when they lost a bunch of weight, they got skinny. A lot of that gravitational loading went away. When they started losing the weight, they started losing mass and muscle. Definitely. And the tension changes even with the same weight. So when you take something like a bench, the hardest... That's why uh, the Mountain Bjornsson, he said I, I, he gained a lot of weight. He gained a lot of weight to make a record for the, what was it, 1,000 pounds, 1,100 pounds uh, deadlift. So he gained a shitload of weight, I remember. He went up to like 400 something. Then he said I had to box, so I had to go down a weight for boxing because he didn't need all that weight. He needed that weight because of a gravitational loading. Unloading is what truly made the muscle and the skeletal strong to to handle that heavy weight of a thousand pounds is not the weight itself he didn't build any muscle but the muscle expanded it had to because it has to further this domain because it's forced through gravity that is the difference i think people they're these coaches and everything they don't see that they can't visualize or understand that that's their problem part is the bottom 
right? That is the point where the pecs are put at the most disadvantage. Therefore, there's the most tension on the pectoral. There is. 50 pounds off get direct tension placed upon them. Okay, so this is- Yes, tension. Things are fast. These things are factored. Can we get deeper stretches? You don't need stretches. They're all. We want the muscles to place the most tension on the weight. You want the most tension placed on the muscles on the weight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. No. That makes sense. To build muscle, we want as much tension as we can get on an individual. You're not building muscle. You're building sarcoplasmic muscle, artificial muscle. You aren't building any muscle. Uh, I told you. Muscles reach an MND size limit, a ceiling limit beyond, beyond which progenitor could donate any extra nuclei to that domain to support further muscle growth. What part does this idiot not understand? Muscle, and then we want the ones that are going to grow. Okay, so when we go into those disadvantaged positions, we have the potential. If you want to further that domain, the myonuclear domain, then you're going to have to do something extremely, extremely very specific. And it isn't this garbage what he's doing. This garbage what you're doing, Jason. It isn't this garbage lifting, shit lifting. Do that. It's also the same, not just the most disadvantaged part. We are raising. You're a gym idiot. Not to mention a lifting slave. <laughs> that total potential you want in a powerlifting meet. Squat to stretch as a quad to deep. <laughs> what? Because that is what will recruit the most muscle fibers. The deepest muscle fibers are the ones that are hardest to get. That is what's going to give us the most muscle growth stimulus. And that's yes, what... Yes, that's what's going to get you over a myonuclear domain size limit. It's going to... You're going to get the deeper muscle fibers. You're going to you're gonna put the most tension and you're going to recruit most of these fibers. And that will magically get you over it. Not. That's not how you get over it, broski. I'll see you in the next one. Don't you think about that? Like, subscribe, support the channel. You can do that forever, but you'll never get over that one to, to, to build real muscle. But you can build the fake ones, though. See you in the next one. Ciao, friends.